Hello, Lions. This is Tyler Edders. I'm really excited to get hacking on Exquisite Script. I used to play Exquisite Corpse with my friends um, in like high school and in college, so this is really, really fun. I saw the post pop up today. I was like, holy crap, I've got to do that. Uh, so I'm going to take us through from cloning the repository to messing around a little bit with um, some fun animations. Uh, all right, so we're going to start where all things start. Whoops. Oh, wow, I'm off to an awesome start today. OK. Hello. It's lines down. It's my life over. OK. So uh, we've got a repository. So let's go check it out. So I had the exquisite script number one installed, and I actually deleted it because I wanted to show the whole process for um, how you get stuff onto Norns. So we're just going to go ahead and download this. Um, so there's a lot of decision trees here. Part of me wants to uh, mount via SMB and then clone that way. Um, I guess we'll do that because that's more fun. So I'm going to connect to Norns. Um, so now that we're connected, I can CD to it. And we can see good old dust. All right, so uh, <clears throat> this should be familiar. We've got our audio code and data. So I'm just going to CD on into code. And then we should see everything. Yep, here's our beautiful little ecosystem. Um, so back at here, I'm going to copy the URL. I'm going to clone this. So because I'm mounted via SMB, um, I'm using my own shell here. So my SSH keys are already uh, installed and on my computer, um, those SSH keys are being used to clone this directly to the Norns, which is really nice. So I'll head on over to Maiden. Uh, here we can see our exquisite script. Great. Um, let's see. Here's our exquisite script. Beautiful. Now I'm uh, running Crow, Just Friends. Um, so I don't want to actually change much of the audio today because I think this is beautiful and someone else can have fun with that. I'm, uh, I've been having a lot of fun with um, animations lately, so that's what we're going to be working on. Okay, so um, what do I want to do here? This is a beautiful script. It's really short. A uh, whole lot of functionality packed into it. Um, I'm going to be adding animation stuff, and I'm going to use the lib folder and I'm going to uh, have all of our graphics stuff kind of partitioned off into its own file so that it's all encapsulated in one place. Um, so this script is named es underscore o one dot lua. So immediately I'm asking myself a bunch of questions. Uh, do I want to make a directory for my own? Do I want to just make a second one? Um, I'm just going to follow the established pattern here, and if we need to subdivide into separate directories in the future or something like that, we can do that. Um, I'm a big proponent of not, not designing. There's a saying in development, it's called Yagni. Uh, Yagni. Yeah, ain't 
gonna need it. So don't build a bunch of stuff that you don't need right now. Okay, so we're going to, so here we are inside exquisite scripts. Um, so I'm just gonna copy uh, ESO1 to ESO2 because I'm number two. And then I'm going to make a lib directory. So this is best practice. You want to have a lib directory uh, in the just right inside your your package inside your script. This is where any of your library goes. Lib is short for library because we're going to build our own library to pull from. Um, okay, so now we've got. ESO1, ESO2, which is an exact copy, and then the lib. All right, so jump back over to Maiden. Here we go, I'm gonna bump the number. Great, and then just to sanity check, uh, I wanna make sure that this still works. You see the two. And we've got sound. Great. Okay, so um, so I just learned about includes the other day, and uh, these are great. It's it's pretty funny because from the programming languages I came from, um, you have to include the file extension in your includes, and in Lua you don't which is actually makes a lot of sense because uh, it'd be pretty remarkable for a programming language to be able to include or require another programming language that's not the same language. So um, I was trying to set this up and I had like dot Lua, but it wasn't working, but you just, whatever your file's named, you just omit the extension. So this is a relative path. Um, it's gonna just pick up library from the location that ES underscore O2 is in. Uh, I'm actually gonna call this graphics. Um, see, muscle memory, I started putting that, that dot Lua in there. Uh, it's just gonna be graphics. So that's where I'm gonna put some of this visual stuff we're going to do. Um, so then we can go into here. Um, I'm going to make this file that I just uh, typed in here, so lib graphics.lua. Um, now I am just going to copy and paste from this other project that I've been working on. Um, so inside any of your includes, you want to define a table for that include, you want to return that at the end, and then um, a lot of your functions you're going to want to add to that table. So there's going to be an init function, and then these are what I'm interested in right now. Uh, I'm going to copy and paste actually all this stuff over, because I think this is great and I want to share it with you all. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to grab, I'm just going to select all, and I'll delete what we don't want. Here's our graphics. Um, I'm going to use a command option F to find and replace. So I decided I don't really like draw. I'm going to replace all instances of draw with graphics. That's great. Um, this is all stuff from my other project that we don't need. And then all this stuff we don't need either. No, actually, no, we do. We need our return at the very end. All right, and then I'm gonna get rid of my little separators here because it's gonna be pretty simple. We're not gonna need these. Okay, so what do we have here? Um, we have our init, which is just like in the main script, there's an init function, which is called right at the beginning. And then inside that, what we're doing is setting some default values for screen levels um, I, 
I, I like working this way because it means that if you ever want to change your screen level, you just change it one place here and then it's going to dynamically change that everywhere that screen level appears. So um, it's just nice to not hard code values throughout your script. It just makes it more maintainable. So then what we have after that are, uh, I was doing a lot of really heavy animation stuff and I was typing these same three functions over and over and over again. Move, line, stroke. So what are these doing? Move means move to a X and Y position on the screen. So uh, 0, 0, or 1, 1 is up here, and then 128, 64 is down here. So move is going to move our pointer to that spot on the screen. And then line rel means draw a line from uh, one from where the pointer is to that relative position. So the, these are xy coordinates. So move to an xy coordinate and then draw a relative line to the um, that coordinate. Actually, that's for this one. That's for line. So here, I'm going to rename this because uh, We're going out of the solo coding area and into a communal coding area, so I want this to make sense to people that come after me. So as I just described, this function MLS is going to move line and then stroke. So it's going to move us to XA, YA, and then draw a line from XA, YA to XB, YB, and then stroke that with whatever the current screen level is. And then line rel is similar, but a little bit different. Um, so line rel is a relative line from the position. So we'll get into that uh, in a second here. Great, and then this one we're not going to need in the script. Just doing some crazy stuff where I needed to pull to see what was in there. Even this might be overkill. We'll see if we can cut this out or not. Um, okay, so I just command S, uh, jump back over here, command S, command P. Um, it's good. We can see that our screen didn't crash or anything like that, so there's no errors. Matron's not yelling at us, so that's awesome. Let's make sure this actually works, so I'm just going to add in an MLS. Uh, let's go from 0, 0 to 50, 50. Command S, and okay, we got an error. So what did I do wrong? Uh, oh, so I just called MLS. We're actually going to be graphics MLS. We've still got an error. Uh, screen There's people that are watching this right now that are screaming because they know exactly what is wrong. Um, so I did not... A couple things actually. So this probably shouldn't be an init. I'm going to put it in redraw. So the screen level wasn't set and screen update, and we were clearing, so a net was going to happen, and then redraw, and that was going to clear whatever I did anyways. We still don't like this. Bad argument, screen line, expected number, got nil. Okay, so Matron's trying to help us right here. It's trying to tell us where the problem is. It sees that in graphics Lua field MLS, expected number got nil. Oh. 
that looked wrong. Sweet. All right, so I just had my arguments wrong. Um, so now we have this beautiful line that is just right in the middle, and we're done. Just kidding. We're actually going to do something cool with this. Okay, so that's MLS, and now let's look at the difference between this and MLRS. So uh, do this, save it. Uh, okay. So in this case, it's going to do the exact same thing. And what's interesting is if we put another one in, oh man, why am I, I'm totally blanking on this. This is fun. So this is why teaching forces you to know things. I've just coded with, um, I've just coded with this function for like six hours and I can't vocalize like what it's doing. So I'm actually not embarrassed. I'm just more amazed. MLS, MLRS. OK, so now we're going to go to the docs because I'm blanking. So docs are your friends. Uh, so screen is the class that we're working with. Um, line rel. Draw a line to specified point relative to current position. So, why did I have these broken out into two functions? The way I, so this doesn't, <laughs> this is great. So, when we're talking about portability of code, um, copying and pasting functions from one pro project to another is like a really great litmus test because when you're developing something, sometimes things can make perfect sense in the context. But then you make a few design changes, and suddenly it just totally falls apart. So I'm just going to scroll back here really quick. So I'm using this a lot. Huh. All right, I'm not going to burn too many calories trying to figure this out right now. It'll come to me, and I'll probably laugh about it, but we might not even need that function. OK. So now we're going to get to the core of what I wanted to do for my main contribution now that our kind of architecture and infrastructure is set up here, um, which is I want to visualize uh, what these numbers are with just lines underneath them. I think that'd be kind of fun to show instead of like 3, 4, 3, 2, 2, 3. I want to see a line that's 3, and then see a line that's 4, and then 3, then 2, then 2, then 3. So that every time you re-roll the dice, they're going to change. I think that'd be pretty fun. Um, so let's see, how are we going to do that? Uh, all right, so if n equals 2 and d is 1, we're going to build. And if n is 3 and d is 1, then we're going to randomize. All right, so it's looking like we're going to want to do this. Somewhere in here is probably where we're going to want to reseed or redraw our chunk of it. However, we're already calling redraw, and it's good to put, to follow established patterns. So what we can probably do is just pass whatever arguments that are being used to generate these um, numbers on in to a different function and then we'll draw the lines based off of that so yeah this MLRS mystery is still just remarkable all right uh, shortcut command slash is going to comment stuff out for you um, okay so what we're doing here is for each one of these we're setting a level we're moving we're updating the text, and then uh, we're going to draw something. So I'm just going to add this feature right into um, right in here. And we already have the number, so this is awesome. 
So we're going to draw, uh, what do we want to call this? So our range for these things is between what div is, starts out as a table of ones. Our range, I think, is 12. No, it's four. Yeah, one to four. So I'm just. So there's always an easy way and a hard way to do things. Uh, hard way would be go through the whole script and read it. I just watched the video, but I don't remember. And then the easy way is just mash the random button a bunch of times and see see if you can infer that way. So cool. So one, two, three, four. Nice and simple. Um, so we're just going to pass uh, our level to 1, 2, 3, and 4. Side note, this is my first time recording with OBS, and it's going to be really funny if this doesn't work. <laughs> Looks like it's working. OK, so um, I'm not going to call this level. I was. That was the first thing that came to mind, but that's just seeing it up here. It looks a little confusing, so I don't want to. I don't want to uh, confuse future developers. So I'm going to call this visualize visualizer. Yeah, it's kind of fun. Okay, so then inside. Uh, so now inside our graphics we're going to have a function called visualizer that's going to accept one argument which is going to be um, this and now that I'm talking a lot about this I realize I need a second argument because one isn't good enough because we have six numbers here so I need both whatever this value is uh, the one two three or four and then I also need um, its index. I need to know if it's the first one, the second one, the third one, the fourth one, the fifth one, the sixth one. So that's this i up here. So this i is already doing that work for us. So to me, that i is in order of information hierarchy, it's more it, I want to say more important, but it takes precedence over um, the division. So I'm going to put that first as my first argument instead of as my second argument. Uh, so another thing, I habitually just put a space here. I notice that before me we have no spaces, so I'm just going to follow the established conventions because uh, I value consistency more than my own opinions about how code ought to look. And they're functionally identical, and arguably this is better because it's less keystrokes and less bytes. Okay, so here's our, our function. Um, this really should be all we need to do to this script. We added two lines. We added line three up here, and then we're adding line 74. All right, about 23 minutes in. So hopefully it should be finished pretty quickly. Um, all right, so I talked about all this stuff and like why I had it here and like what I used to do. I'm realizing that I don't care about it for this, so I'm just gonna get rid of that. And then, uh, yeah, I still just can't wrap my head around why I had these two separate functions, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna worry about that. And then, okay, so here's our. definition. So when these parameters come in, I'm also going to go ahead and update uh, these to not have spaces. Okay, so this is going to be, I'm going to call this, I guess, index is cool. And then I think, I think division is the, the etymology in this. What why is this called div? Div is I don't know what else it could be, but I'm just gonna call it div. And heck, I'm just gonna call this i. 
Okay, so um, now what are you doing? We're going to draw some lines. We are lines after all. All right, so uh, first thing I need to do is figure out how far down um, this like bottom row here is. So I'm going to use my MLS um, Function here. Uh, I want to start at zero. It's either zero or one because that's going to be all the way to this far side. And then I don't know. This looks like it's about halfway down. So what is that? Thirty-two ish. And then I want to draw a line. Um, it's going to be a horizontal line because this is X. So it's going to be straight across. And then that's going to go all the way to the end. And then. Ooh, our screen went black. Oh no. Visualizer. Okay. Did not put graphics in front of that. That will do it. Um. Okay, so now we need to stroke. We are stroking. What am I doing wrong? It's cool there. It's cool there. Uh, this need to be one. Huh. Okay, so it's not zero, and I had my x and y's mixed up. I always do this. So, see how the line went straight down? I was expecting this to go straight across. Oh well. So, let's swap these and then see what we get. Alright, alright. So now we got a horizontal line way up there. Um, so now changing that 32 to 1 should move us over, which it does. And now, huh, it's just amazing the things you learn. Whoops. So now, what I'm looking at is this this point right here. I'm trying to get this like right underneath everything. Yeah, there's that vertical line again. One thirty two. One thirty two. Uh, I think. I'm remembering why I had MLRS. Is this all right? So whenever I get this turned around with something, I need to like back way up and reevaluate my life decisions. So I'm going to take all this out. You saw me going back and forth between these two scripts. That's because if you command P when you're in an included script, it's not going to update the Norn screen. It only does it from the main one. So I'm going to comment this out and I'm just going to paste the internals of that function we have. I'm going to debug this a little bit because I'm like really confused as to why I'm so confused. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know, I'm going to put some random numbers in here and see if I can make sense of my life. All right, so, uh, yeah, that's why I had MLRS. So, 
All right, so line works as I described, which is that it's going to move, it's going to draw your line, sorry. This series of functions is going to move you to position x a y a and then draw a line to position x b y b. These are absolute positions on the on the on the screen. When it's rel, this second set here is relative to this first set. So this becomes effectively zero zero because it's relative to this. So that's when you saw me trying to draw that and being confused, that's because I was so used to using MLRS on my other project. I tried to port it over here and then I forgot, you know, what the signature was for the for the function. Okay. So that's clear now. I'm going to keep working over here because it's easier. Um, so let's see. So what we're saying here is you can see as I'm updating this, oh, we need to go down a little bit. Uh, let's go. That's too far. I love designing UI and designing um, things to look beautiful. So this is really fun to just decide. I, I love Norns for that because you have to make these decisions on a pixel level. And it's really satisfying. All right, so let's try to get this moved over a little bit. So that's going to be too far because you see, oh, no, that's exactly perfect. All right, so that's our, this is our corner for um, the leftmost side. So let's see how wide we're going to need this to be. Uh, it needs to be about two and a half times as long. That's too long. So that is like one pixel too long. Nope. Doesn't feel right. Okay, so after <laughs> 10 painful minutes, I finally accomplished my goal of drawing a line exactly where I wanted to draw it. So now you need to take a step back and reevaluate and say, is this actually um, what I want to be doing right now? And yeah, I'm, I'm still pretty happy with this. I think I actually want this to be um, lighter than everything else that's going on. Um, because it's not as important. And now that I make it lighter, I don't really like how it's so close to the leftmost edge. So we're going to scoot this back um, two pixels. And because this is a relative line, not an absolute line, we're going to need to add two pixels here if we want to keep that terminus at the same point. There we go. You see this, this part didn't move. If I had kept this at just 45, scoots back over so let's go back up to 47 okay so we have a beautiful line um, this is like our baseline so now we're going to draw uh, those these these lines um, I'm going to break these out into two separate functions in case someone wants to change it in the future it's always good to separate your concerns um, so that it's called building seams into your code. Clear seams so that things are decoupled and that you can make a change on something and it will easily uh, be understandable by people in the future. Most of the time that person in the future is you, which it's really nice when you do your future self a favor. But especially with a community project like this, I want to make sure that um, things are understandable. So I'm going to say graphics, baseline, and we don't need to draw this six times in a loop like that. So I'm just going to draw it up here. Um, so now we're going to go over to graphics. Oops. 
takes no arguments. Uh, yep, that's all we're gonna do. I'm gonna change this to back to MLRS because I remember what the heck I'm doing. And then I'm just gonna change this to MLRS and that. So now MLRS, it's called MLRS because it's gonna move line rel and then stroke. And we've got a typo. All right, so now when I save, nothing should change. It crashes field MLRS, uh, field and baseline graphics. Attempt to call nil value field MLRS X A Y A X B Y B X A Y A X B Y B screen and oh all sweet yes we are in a Jorge Luis Bourgeois novel where everything's a labyrinth and it all folds in on itself okay um, so now back to our visualizer uh, we understand why this was called MLRS um, so now we have our coordinates for where the start is and then we can extrapolate that or yeah extrapolate and we'll know where the end is so our start is at 635 and our end of this line that we're talking about is at 6 um, no, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah. Is that 35 down? Six over 35 down. 635. So to draw a horizontal line, it's going to stay at 35. Wow, this is so interesting to try to verbalize all this stuff. I've I've studied <laughs> mathematics and graphic design. This is my first time trying to like say this stuff aloud, and I always get tripped up with x and y coordinates. And it's so funny because it's only two dimensions, but it still does. I don't know. It's I can intuitively understand it, but then when I try to explain it, it just kind of breaks down. So this is awesome. All right, so what, what we're doing here, though, is we're adding 47 to 6, and then we're staying at the same um, y value, which is 35. So 47 plus 6 is 53, and then we're staying at 35. Okay, so why is that important? Well, I want to know... A lot of this is going to be by feel, but I want to know roughly how many pixels we have per character to draw this thing. So we have eight characters, so we have 53 minus 6. We have 47 pixels divided by 8, so each character is going to get about 5 pixels to itself. Um, and we're going to need padding between those. I want padding between those anyways. So that's good to know. Um, I think just taking a second to examine the typography, um, the four and the one seem to have, all these are four pixels wide, I think. So I think I'm gonna want simply two pixel wide lines underneath each of these because then they get to be centered. Yeah, I think that sounds good. So let's try that. Um, so two pixel wide lines with 5.875 
pixels per character it means we get we're probably gonna have two pixels on one side and three on the other or two and one I don't know we'll see not super important but um, okay so we have our our index and our division coming in and then we know that index one let's just start it here uh, because that's because that's going to be easiest so I'm just gonna um, make a simple conditional here this is actually going to go in the end code I'm just going to do this so that I know I'm only drawing one line and that one line is for our first index. So I want to draw a relative line from 635. We're just going to start way at the start point over here. And then I want to draw the line going down instead of across. So this is going to be zero. And then I'm just going to do an arbitrary number for now. And let's see. Oh, that looks nothing because this is commented out crash because I'm calling MLS which was our old you can see that really quick from right here MLRS sweet we got a line we did it 41 minutes in, and we got a vertical line and a horizontal line. Honestly, this is why I love development, though. It, it, there's an artistry that goes with it, and it's like you take pride in understanding and learning as you go, and you take pride in getting things just, I want to say just as you want them, but it's 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 more about aesthetics to me. It's more about how does the code look? How does the software actually function? How expressive is the code? How easy is it for people to use? If you're too focused on just like drawing these two lines, um, yeah, you're gonna be really disappointed that you just spent 42 minutes of your life watching someone code this video. But it's 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 the journey. It's not the destination, man. So. All right, so 10, 10's about right. I want to, I don't want to just like take up a whole bunch of space because um, it's there. I love negative space and I want to leave room for people to do stuff in the future. So I'm going to start scooting this over a little bit. Uh, looks like 10 is probably going to be Okay, so that's right below uh, where the one is, which definitely pleases that part of my brain. So then the four, you can see it terminates one pixel over. So 10 is going to be our the first part of the bar. And now we need to draw a second bar right next to that. So that is going to be at 11. And got to go back here, command P. All right, so this... This should look okay. Um, we'll see. I actually want to add a little space between the um, line, the the baseline, and uh, the visualization. Okay. Yeah. That's that's looking nice and minimal and expressive and all of the good things. All right, so now we're gonna get to do some arithmetic. And I can already tell that I'm gonna want to, um, uh, we have our highlighted number right here. I can already tell that I'm probably gonna wanna do that with our lines below, but we'll see. I don't know, I kinda wanna keep this video at just, um, in an hour, so maybe I'll stop or stop casting and code that, or maybe I'll keep going. Who knows? All right, so we have our horizontal 
baseline, we have our vertical size line. Um, we're dealing with fours, so let's keep our multiples set to four. So I don't want a, a 10 high. Um, visualizer I want a 16 high one let's see if that's too long we might have to ah oh, no that's fine that's great that's just great okay so um, what do we need to do graphics visualizer is going to be called six times each time for a different index and each time we need to move over one and each time we need to look at this number and decide how high this line needs to be so uh, let's see we have our um, let's call it x Oh, local X. Right? Yeah, I'm trying to think. Yeah, so local X, local Y. Um, we really like this 36 number, so that's cool. And then um, we're going to call this amplitude, I think. I don't know, this is fun. I mean, my first instinct in doing this video was to like code the whole thing and then go through and pretend I'm a genius and can just like do it, uh, write flawless code as I go. But I thought it'd be more fun to be a little bit messy about this. So. I know I'm going to need this x value because I'm going to be working with it for each different index. I know I'm going to need the y because this is something of a constant that's probably going to be reused, but I might be able to hard code it. And then this amplitude number will be fun because this could this could change sometime in the future. Um, so yeah, so that would go like that. And then um, for each of these, we're going to, what can we do? So I is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Div is going to be 1, 2, 3, and 4. Um, so the amplitude is going to be sixteen divided by no, that's inverse. So if we did it like this. Um, that would mean that 1 would be the highest and uh, 4 would be the smallest. So what? We just flip the flip them? So that means 4 divided by 16. No. So again, this is like a simple arithmetic problem. When I'm forced to perform it, it's it's fun. So I need to look at this. So div equals one, two, three, four. I equals one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, let let's start with just the eyes. Let's just get development is all about breaking larger problems down into a bunch of smaller problems. So our first goal is to get six equally sized parallel lines that are horizontal going across the bottom. Um, so to do that, we're going to take local x. This one is x plus 1. And we are going to um, we're going to add this. I'm going to comment this one out for now. We're going to add uh, I, and I'm just going to guess 
No. Plus. I don't know. Let's see what happens if you do that. Let's just let's just see if we're even like. Okay, so now we have six pixels wide. We've iterated through six times. And how do I want to do this? So we have x plus i. That's obviously not good enough. We need to add more space between each one. So that's going to be. Uh, so my first instinct was to do something like this. Yeah, so see how that spread them out? But that's not going to quite do what we want to do. Um, but we're getting closer. Okay. We have our six lines. Now let's get them to line up how we want them to. So for number one, we want this to actually not move at all. So I'm going to do this procedural, and that will make apparent um, what the more beautiful algorithm underneath it should be. So if i equals 1, I'm just going to hard code this. We want, yeah, so never be afraid to just do something the quote unquote dumb way because behind that is what the clever quote unquote way is. So x, y, so we're just going to deal with 2 right now. We don't want to be looking at all 6. I'm just going to add 10 to this. Load fail. What did I do wrong? Probably syntax error. Oh. All right. So yeah, tens too much. Um, eight. Yeah, that's pretty good. So let's see if eight is actually our um, the right multiple. Yeah, that looks good. So, all right, so eight is the horizontal multiple. Um, so that's great. And then let's figure out this amplitude. I feel like this is. I don't know what, like 16 divided by eight. It's all right. So back to that Yagni thing. I just made up a variable that I thought I was going to need. Maybe I don't actually need that. Um, turns out I don't. So we can just do div times four. So don't don't try to like you know engineer yourself too far ahead because you just confuse yourself. Like look at that. That's that's great. That's just that's just all it needs to be. Okay. So now we need that second 
that second line, remember that x plus 1? So, again, I'm doing this the dumb way, quote unquote, to start. And then through doing it this way, we're going to see um, the better way. Sweet. Oh, yeah. Look at those fat little indicators. Beautiful. And they're nice and centered. I'm really happy with the spacing. We'll see how it looks like with all six, but that's pretty good. All right, so what's our pattern here? So for each one, um, we're adding What are we doing? It starts at 0, then goes to 8, then 16. And that's going to be 24, then 32, and then 36. Right? So And then we're adding one to each of those. So what we can do is with the I, we could either we could either multiply I by zero and then add eight. That's dumb because that erases I and that doesn't that's not gonna help us. We can multiply I by eight. Just add eight. Again, this is so funny because I've never actually coded aloud like this. So if this was just me by myself, not talking to y'all, I'd have like some beautiful music on. I'd stare out the window for like three minutes while I think about how I want to approach this. And then I would just do it. So this is really fun to be put on the spot. Um, all right, I'm, I'm going to code the whole thing the dumb way. Just, just do it all. Just, just it's fine. Just close your eyes. Just, shh, just it's okay. It's okay. Uh, Sixteen plus eight is twenty-four. It's twenty-five. Twenty-four plus eight is thirty-two. It's thirty-three. Thirty-two plus eight is forty. It's forty-one. Sweet. So that is exactly what I wanted it to do. Oh yeah, and look, it even updates. Ah, beautiful code. Beautiful, beautiful code. Oh yeah, look at that. That's awesome. You know, I'm not even going to worry about changing the color because I think the uh, the brightness of down here actually is a really nice balance with our main number up there. That could be a future challenge for someone to update the brightness, the, the screen level of each of these and have it change as you go through it. OK, so we're basically done. I mean, we could just commit all this and ship it, but we're not going to because this is a lot of duplicative code and there's a smart way to there's a smarter way to do this. So let me see here. Um, all right, so I'm going to look for patterns between all these. What's the same? Uh, div times 4 is the same. 0 is the same. Y is the same. Graphics MLRS is the same. Hmm. Interesting. And then inside each one of these, we have the only thing that's changing is X. So actually, this like local Y is totally redundant because these... In the end, we're only going to have two calls here. Um, I'm not going to have, I will never push a, I will never commit code with six if else's. Not on my, not on my watch. So div times four, um, again, you know, I don't know. I. I don't really like, I was trying to follow convention here. I, I think you, 
this actually makes me kind of nervous. I actually don't like having any arithmetic or calculations inside my methods. I like to do that explicitly outside of it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna call this um, uh, we'll call this that that a number that I had you know ostracized earlier. We'll we'll do that here. So. Uh, that's cool, and then we'll just all right. So now let's make sure that still works. That I didn't totally. Oh yeah, yeah. So I want to do these little chunks. Screen line rel number expected got nil. Uh... Oh the heck all right cool okay so that's been simplified um, so we've got our divs figured out and we've got our okay so here's our current puzzle our current our current task um, how do we make this work why am I struggling with this so each one is just whatever the number is plus one so I'm like a really visual person I'd probably pull out a, a pencil and a piece of paper to do this but so eight is multiple but to start since we're doing relative lines um, one is going to be eight and nine two is going to be 16 and 17, 3 is going to be 24 and 25. So this, the second part of the pattern is really obvious. It's just adding 1 to the first number. So the reason I'm getting tripped up is multiplication, zero indexes. Um, what is it? It's just I times 8. Is that all it is? Am I an idiot? Yeah, I'm, I'm a total fucking idiot. It's just i times 8. And then i times 8 plus 1. Amazing. Okay. Oh, wow, that's great. Okay, so x is just i times 8, and then i times 8 plus 1. Uh, wait. Order of operations. Yeah. Cool. So now, <clears throat> to save myself future work, because I'm not confident with my uh, batting average tonight, I'm going to comment this out instead of delete it. To... Oh. oh, we got it, but our spacing's a little off now. Why is that? Um, that is because our offset of some sort, we need to scoot everything over a little bit. So, what do we say? Uh, it looks like three pixels. Too far. I don't know, what do you think? Is that... Yeah, that's good, because look, the one is on the left side and the four is on the right side. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay. We did it. Good job, everyone. Hey, look at that. We're at an hour. All right, so I'm gonna clean all this stuff up. Um, 
so what else can be cleaned up here? Uh, okay, after you delete a bunch of stuff like that, you should really rerun and make sure you didn't like hit a parenthesis or something. Um, turns out x1, x2, turns out we're not even using these values anymore, which is great. Don't need that. Um, I'm going to leave baseline hard coded again. I don't want to over over develop anything. Although it's definitely it's not at level one anymore, is it? That's what's up with that baseline. Oh, do I need a stroke? Huh. All right, well, instead of uncovering that mystery, oh, here's why, because I'm setting the screen level up here. Um, yeah, and that's back to the original implementation where we didn't have the screen uh, level being set before MLRS. So let's see if that does it. Yep. Sweet. Oh yeah, look at that, look at that. Just look at it. Yeah. We're done. Um, have some celebratory music to send us off. All right, so we went over uh, adding an include. Um, adding a baseline, a visualizer, some excruciatingly complicatedly simple arithmetic to make some nice little levels down below. So now uh, we're almost done. We just need to um, get this up to GitHub. Uh, so I, let's see, is this, can anyone push to this? I doubt it. Probably. Yeah, I highly doubt, highly doubt I can just push through this. So what I'm going to do is clone uh, or fork this repository. Let's get some reverb. Nice celebratory ambience while we wait. Um, okay, so I just, I just forked this, so now this is my own copy of this repository. Um, now I want to, uh, I want to actually push to this repository, because I have permissions to push this repository. Um, so I always forget this, to make this command. Um, forget this. Let's 
it's a little slow when you're doing this over SMB. Okay, and so then. get add origin. What's our master? The zeitgeist is to move to main instead of master, so we'll we'll probably do that before long here. Oh, uh, it'd help if I uh, committed my files, huh? So git add is going to add everything. Uh, that dot means everything relative to right here in this directory. Um, this is ES2. It's our commit message, highly informative really important for uh, engineering decisions in the future to have explicit and complete and detailed commit messages. So I'm going to give this a push, the old pusherino. So now we've just pushed from Norns up to GitHub. And then uh, if I refresh this page, we'll see ES2. And now the really fun part of working with other people um, is we're going to submit a pull request. We're able to merge. Uh, I'm going to give this a quick review to make sure it looks OK. So here's my mar my new changes uh, graphics 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 no new line no extra junk and there you have it thanks for watching um, this is really fun haven't done one of these before Really look forward to seeing what everyone else does, and uh, have a good weekend.